Good morning. I'm John Jones, Chairman of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority. This meeting is being conducted pursuant to the notice provisions of the Oklahoma Open Meeting Act with all participating authority members attending in person. While this meeting is open in public, there will be no public comments as is OTA's longstanding historical practice. In addition to being open to the public for in-person observation, the meeting is being live streamed and recorded for remote viewing. The time is 10.03 a.m. and I'm calling the July 9th, 2024 regular meeting of the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority to order. Please call the roll. Charity, thank you. Mr. Willberry. Here. Mr. Todd Cohn. Here. Mr. Gene Love. Here. Mr. John Titsworth. Here. Ms. Dana Weber. Here. Mr. John Jones. Here. <clears throat> we have a quorum. Thank you. Before we get started, I want to recognize uh, Senator Jim Inhofe, who passed away this morning. And I want to ask Mr. Love to make some comments. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's sad news for the state of Oklahoma. Been in Senator Inhofe's office many times in Washington and uh, was a good friend and just an incredible supporter of the transportation industry in Oklahoma. And I guess what I knew him best for, uh, uh, I'm retired military and after I retired from the military service, I was had a defense uh, consulting company for up until about seven years ago. And, and uh, I guess, uh, Jim, during the during BRAC, which was the base realignment and closure back in the late 80s and early 90s, um, the individual in Washington that was head of that, uh, Jim Inhofe, knew really well. And the day after his name was announced, Senator Inhofe had him in his office talking about the installations in, in Oklahoma. And as a result, there's not a military installation in Oklahoma that lost anything during the back, BRAC realignment and closure. And in fact, Fort Sill gained the Air Defense Artillery School from Fort Bliss, which Fort Bliss didn't like at all. But that's a result of Senator Jim Inhofe. What a great Oklahoman and uh, uh, just sad news of his passing. But uh, uh, there was not a stronger supporter of the military anywhere in Congress than Senator Jim Inhofe. So, uh, let's let's have a, a moment of silence uh, in honor of Senator Inhofe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Love, for those comments. <clears throat> um, I ask for a uh, motion for the approval of minutes for the, our meeting of June fourth, twenty twenty four. So moved. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, please vote. Uh, either yes, no, or abstain. <laughs> the voting is ended. <clears throat> we have one abstain. I believe there should be, I believe there should be two. Why don't we do a uh, verbal just to confirm? Mr. Baring? Abstain. Mr. Cohn? Abstain. Mr. Love? Yes. Mr. Titsworth? Yes. Ms. Weber? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Minutes have been approved. <clears throat> Moving on to our items of business, the first items are the finance items. Mr. Cohn? The first item is 1201 and Mr. Jepston? Good morning, Chairman Jones, members of the authority. I have item 1201 submitted for consideration and approval of the authority is to request is a request to authorize the executive director to negotiate and, ex and execute a short term extension of the authority's contract with the American Staffing Corps for the staff augmentation of the toll collectors on the Indian Nation and Will Rogers turnpikes for an additional eight months to ensure appropriate staffing levels uh, are maintained through the cashless conversion of the turnpikes. The contract was authorized pursuant to board approval of agenda item 592 on July 23rd, 2019 for an initial three-year term with a two-year option to extend. Toll collector augmentation services will not be resolicited. Uh, the short-term extension of the augmentation services 
will be for a period of time necessary to complete OTA's conversion to cashless tolling. The cost for the service is based on the contract rates and is estimated not to exceed $2,500,000. Happy to answer any questions. So this is it. We'll, this, we'll be done when, when this contract expires. When we convert, this is, this is over. That's great. Any other questions? If there are none, based on the recommendation of the um, staff, I would move for approval of item 1201, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion for approval of item 1201. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Please vote appropriately. The voting is ended and item 1201 has been approved. The next item is 1202, Matt Lovelholtz. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Submitted for consideration and approval of the authority is a request to authorize the director to negotiate and execute the 2024-2025 Appendix C with the Office of Management and Enterprise Services for an amount not to exceed $774,500. This is an annual renewal with OMES as part of the Consolidated State Services the authority receives from them. These services include, but are not limited to the core employee maintenance management system, data center, phone ser services across the organization, along with the necessary network connectivity and customer service related phone features, such as IVR, live agent chat, auto dialer, et cetera. The staff has reviewed the above item and recommends for approval. I would like to also add uh, the amount uh, decreased 2.3% last, from last year. Uh, this result is because of ongoing phone audits uh, that we've been able to cancel unused lines. Any uh, questions? Stand for any questions. Any questions of Mr. Lopholtz? If there are none, based on the recommendation of the staff, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval of item 1202. Thank you. We have a motion for approval of item 1202. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Please vote appropriately. <clears throat> Voting's ended. Item 1202 has been approved. Next item is 1203, Mr. Chairman, um, Ms. Bolden. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Submitted for the consideration and approval of the authority is a request to authorize the director to negotiate and execute separate task orders for general technology consultant services. These, uh, these task orders will be assigned pursuant to professional services master agreements previously authorized by the board. Task orders issued pursuant to this item shall not exceed $2 million. The revised amount not to exceed for all task orders to be issued under the master services agreements is $3,223,180. Staff has approved, reviewed the above item and recommends for approval. Are there any questions? Seeing none, Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval of item 1203 as presented. Thank you. We have a motion for approval of item 1203. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Please vote appropriately. The voting is ended and item 1203 has been approved. Final item of consideration, Mr. Chairman, is 1204. Ms. Patterson. Good morning, Chairman Jones, members of the authority. Item number 1204 is the payment register prepared by the Comptroller Division. This payment register includes all payments made for the month of May 2024. The staff has reviewed this item and recommends this item for approval. Are there any questions? If there are none, Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval of item 1204 as presented. Thank you. We have a motion for item number 1204. Do we have a second? Second. <clears throat> Please vote appropriately. Voting is ended and item 1204 has been approved. <clears throat> that takes us on to the, our next agenda items, uh, engineering and construction. Mr. Berry. Thank you, Chairman Jones. Uh, first item is item 1205, which will be presented by Mrs. Nelson. Good morning, Chairman Jones, members of the authority, Director E. Kelly. Presented for consideration of the authority is the request that the following change orders and supplemental agreements be approved. 
These are presented as items one through four. Of these items, three of them add pay, um, excuse me, three of them add pay items to the contract to compensate the contractor for additional work. Two of them grant back time to the contract. One of them warrants time, um, excuse me, one of them warrants incentive for early completion and one establishes final quantities. As Jeff mentioned last month, we have automated these reports, so this is the second time you will see these uh, reports in the new format. With that, I would be happy to answer any questions. I'd just like to say I really like the new format. Thank you, thank you. Are there, do we incentivize all of our contracts? Majority of them, majority of them, yes, sir. Are there any other questions uh, for Mrs. Nelson on item 1205? If not, I move that we approve this item as presented. Thank you. We have a motion for approval of item 1205. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Love. Please vote appropriately. Voting is ended and item 1205 has been approved. Thank you. Uh, my next item is item 1206. Would which will be presented by Mr. Butler. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Good to see everyone this morning. Uh, Engineering Division has two items we'd like to present for consideration here today. That's items 1206 and 1207. <clears throat> Item 1206. This is a construction contract award for projects item C 62H and item C 68. This is cable bearer installation from milepost 52 to milepost 62.91. Also includes rehabilitation of bridge 49.06 and rehabilitation of bridge 50.5. This is near McAllister in Pittsburgh County. As you can see there, we're happy to see that we had eight bidders. That's, that's uh, quite a few bidders. I uh, hadn't seen that many in a while. Uh, had, a, had some uh, really good bids there. Built right construction was our low bid and the amount of $11,661,857.67. This is about 9.1% uh, under the engineer's estimate. Uh, staff's reviewed um, the bids and we recommend approval. And before we go to a vote, I would like to point out that um, you see there the cable barrier, um, the 10 miles, that represents the last cable barrier project uh, in our cable barrier program initiative. So. This is a big day uh, for us. Uh, we uh, started, you know, 12 years ago with uh, 26 projects on our list and was wondering if we would ever get them done or not. So we have completed 22 projects uh, to the tune of about 252 uh, miles. We've got three that are in construction that amount to about 53 miles. And Jeff and I think those projects are, are wrapping up for the most part. And then with the award of this today, um, that 10 miles will be our last major cable barrier initiative um, project. So we are no pressure to approve the approve the, <laughs> the bid here, but this this is the, the last the last project. So you know we track the number of hits on our um, cable barrier. Obviously, the, when you install cable barrier. Um, you know, you're putting yourself out there to maintain it. There's a lot of maintenance. When, when one of these gets struck, you know, it might it might you know, bend up or um, destroy two posts, or it might, if you get a semi hung up in it, it might destroy a hundred posts. So, to date, it's been struck over 2,600 times, which could have all been crossover accidents. So, this safety feature is something you can see immediately. Um, whenever you whenever you install it, but uh, we've also replaced about 35,000 posts, and we've got about five, you know, a little over five million uh, in maintenance of the system anytime it gets hit, which we're happy to keep this system updated and maintained. So, uh, I think Dir Director Kelly's got a few more uh, things he'll mention about our Cable Bear Initiative and his director's report uh, at the end of our meeting. But uh, with that. Again, we've reviewed and uh, recommend approval. I had a yeah. couple of questions. What, yeah. what, what, uh, can you go into detail about what, what the bridge rehab portion is? 
not in terms of dollars, but in terms yeah. of description? Yeah, sure. So the bridge rehabs are, uh, you know, pretty straightforward um, bread and butter type um, bridge work for us. This will be uh, superstructure replacements, replacing uh, beams, deck, parapet, substructure repairs, those types of things. And the cable bear project has stood alone for years. Um, and then when it came right down to, you know, about the time we were thinking about letting it to construction, it made sense to combine this cable bear portion uh, with these two bridge projects. But it, it, it is straightforward bridge rehab work. Okay. What would you estimate, just on a general uh, rule of thumb, a price per mile of cable, cable barrier? Yeah, that's uh, we've tracked that. I didn't pull that, bring that number with me, but you know, it's probably when we started, it was probably two hundred fifty thousand a mile, and um, you know, it's it's up above above that right now, probably four hundred thousand a mile, something along yeah. those lines. And cable barrier is an alternative to concrete barrier wall, and concrete barrier wall, you know, they're both positive barriers; they prevent crossover accidents but the cable bear is probably about a quarter of the cost. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot less maintenance with the concrete barrier. Uh, the cable barrier, there's, got, there's you know, a little bit more maintenance involved with that, but much uh, uh, less of a initial investment with the cable barrier. Well, I think I can speak on behalf of all the uh, members of the board. We're, we're excited to have the, all the cable barriers finished. Absolutely. When this project yeah, is Yeah, we certainly completed. appreciate the board support. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions for item 1206? If not, I move that we approve this item as presented. Thank you. We have a motion for approval of item 1206. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion for approval <clears throat> and a second. Please vote appropriately. You know, when we started this cable barrier process, um, uh, we had a little discussion about the expense of it and that sort of thing, but we also made the comment, uh, you can't put a price on a human life. That's right. And uh, when you talk about 2,600 strikes since we started that process, there's no question it saves lives. Absolutely. That's correct. Did everybody vote? Apparently we're not. It's not accepting it again. Chair, let's uh, there, there, there the voting is entered. Voting is ended and item 1206 has been approved. Thank you. Mr. Butler. Yes, sir. Item 1207, this is on-demand design contract modification for the access bond program uh, submitted for consideration of the authority's request that the following item be approved or disapproved. Uh, this is contract number TEI-02. Um, this contract modification is to provide compensation for additional engineering services for the respective access program projects in which there are three included in this contract. This change will increase the consultants not to exceed contract amount to include various design activities on select projects. Uh, this supplemental amount of $9,615,419.73 uh, will be utilized for uh, the middle project there. If you look at your list of three, this is EWC 28004, which is our east-west connector um, and I-35 uh, interchange. Um, this potentially uh, one day will be a five-decker interchange, much like what you see in Dallas or uh, Houston or uh, in Texas, but it'll t you know, take time. It'll take several years to, to actually need those latter phases. So what we've negotiated here is kind of that first phase to make a minimum connection from I-35 back over uh, across the river to Newcastle to I-44 in the Tri-City area. Um, again, the two other projects there, the EWC 28003, this project's already been restarted. It's already been negotiated in full to um, PS&E, and that's from Western Avenue Interchange East uh, to I-35. Uh, then T26011 is on the Turner. Uh, this project's been on pause for a while. Um, we've just taken this one off pause and we'll begin working on it soon. Um, and to continue on, the amount due under this contract modification number four shall not exceed the $9,615,419.73.
The revised contract amounts are not to exceed a $20,746,273.73. Staff's reviewed the above item and uh, recommends approval. Again, happy to answer any questions. Any questions for item 1207? If not, I move that we approve this item as presented. Thank you. We have a motion for approval of item 1207. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Love. Please vote appropriately. Voting is ended and item 1207 has been approved. Uh, my last item, Chairman Jones, is item 1208, which will be presented by Mrs. Powell. Good morning, Chairman Jones, members of the authority, Director E. Kelly. The following parcels consisting of the approximate acreage, acres at the locations identified below were previously acquired by the authority. Parcel number TD227, Section 5, Township 18 North, Range 12 East, approximately 2.77 acres on the Turner Turnpike in Creek County. And also J300, Track 3, Section 3, Township 11 North, Range 5 West, 4.94 acres, more or less, on the Kilpatrick, excuse me, the John Kilpatrick Turnpike <coughs> in Canadian County. A staff review of the properties was conducted and has been determined that a portion of the described parcels in the approximate acreage identified was acquired for previous turnpike projects and is not needed for any construction or maintenance needs of the turnpike system. Based on that determination, staff recommends that the authority consider and vote to declare the above described parcel surplus and to authorize the director to obtain a survey, appraisal, and sell, lease, or otherwise dispose of the property, including use in a land swap to acquire other property needed for the turnpike system. Uh, a couple of items to note, TD-227 was acquired for the Turner Widening Project uh, T-107-D2 on uh, I just said that on the Turner Turnpike. And J300 Track 3 was acquired for the Kilpatrick uh, Southwest Extension. I'd be happy to take any questions. I would just comment that I really like the addition of the overview map that helps us see where these are. Excellent. It really is, is uh, helpful. I'm glad, thank you. Uh, I had just an observation that that first track looks like that's, uh, I don't know what all those uh, buildings and businesses are around that but that looks like a pretty prime piece of property it does have pu public access it was used for a staging area so it's actually pretty clean as well is that something you think we'll look at trying to hold an auction on yes with we, uh, we intend to put it for a public auction yes and then the second one uh, appears to be at or near school what school is that Ooh, i might have to ask for help on that one Mustang, Mustang. Yes, Mustang. has yeah. the uh, school district indicated having any interest in it? We have talked to the school on several occasions and they were not interested. The adjoining landowner does have some interest in it. And this is a parcel that um, because of the location to our ramp, yeah. it will probably have limits of no access. Right. And so this will probably end up being um, going back to offer to the school one more time. If not, the adjoining landowner will have a chance. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for item 1208? If not, I move that we approve this item as presented. Thank you, Mr. Perry. We have a motion for approval of item 1208. Do we have a second? Thank you, Mr. Love. Please vote appropriately. The voting is ended and item 1208 has been approved. <clears throat> that moves on the agenda to the report uh, section and our first report is the Highway Patrol report, Captain Christian. Good morning again, Chairman, members of the authority. For May 2024, Turnpike Troopers made 3,635 violator contacts, 635 motorist assists, investigated 154 motor vehicle collisions, and made four criminal interdiction arrests. Troopers worked 988 shifts. They averaged about 193 miles per shift, which equaled about 190,000 miles driven. Uh, the Turner Turnpike reported one fatality. 
The at-fault driver was killed after driving in the wrong direction and striking another vehicle head-on. Detailed information regarding commercial motor vehicle enforcement, aircraft traffic enforcement, toll enforcement, uh, motorcycle enforcement, and collision reduction has been included in our report for your review. And in addition to our report, I guess last month, Major Bow was asked a question regarding our uh, personnel numbers. He misspoke last month. He said we had 122 troopers. We have 122 vehicles, but we have 105 um, troopers is what we have. And our, our goal is to have 111 troopers by the end of the year when we graduate our next academy in December. I'll entertain any questions if you have them. Were the four criminal interdictions drug related? Yes, sir. Did we get to work on forfeiting the vehicles or anything like that? Are you working with the counties for that? I don't know the details on those. I know some of those came off of the, uh, the turnpike that I manage, and um, some of those were turned over to other agencies for further okay. action, but I don't have details on all those. Thank you. Yes, sir. How's Major Val doing with his shoulder? He's doing well. Back he's, on he's recuperating. He's on vacation right now, vacation. so he's doing really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next report is a consulting engineer report, Jimmy Sparks. Morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Chairman Jones, members of the authority, Director E. Kelly. Concerning the trust requirements, we are compiling the new inspection data in preparation of our annual report, which is due to staff on October 1st. Uh, over the next couple of months, I'll be sharing um, all the in-service facility ratings, as I always do, and how our assets are performing year over year. and. Uh, um, and how, you know, main, through, the, through maintenance and capital reinvestment, we, we continue to operate at high service levels. Uh, it was talked about a lot in Darren's report. I did want to mention, again, just things that don't show up in your actual ratings, but the uh, uh, commitment to providing positive barrier throughout the system is, is also a big deal and just the overall safety of the system. In June, our engineers ch checked 12 overload trucks for travel. Uh, that brings us to 97 uh, for the year. Um, and we were at 150 for 2023, so you see we're probably outpacing that. And these are the the the, the uh, say extra heavy and uh, long loads that require special permitting and checks. So um, the turnpike system remains a vital part of the nation's infrastructure for transport uh, transporting these type loads. Uh, always happy to report there were no special inspections in the month of June for over height impacts. Um, our engineers have, I did want to point out that our engineers have evaluated bridges and other structures on the Chickasaw Creek, H.E. Bailey, Indian Nation, Muskogee, Turner, Will Rogers Turns Pike, as well as uh, the OTA headquarters building over the last few months. And um, many of these were items that uh, um, we're working with maintenance on a fix, and, and that's also a part. We talk about capital reinvestment on the stuff that, that Darren's group um, awards for, uh, for projects, but our maintenance crews do a lot of uh, the maintenance, which is also a big part of, of the service level rating. So uh, always want to point out where we can assist maintenance in, in uh, uh, completing smaller projects. Um, our capital plan project summary is in our monthly report. I'm always happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Yeah, Jimmy, this is a question for you or maybe TJ. Uh, I think uh, TJ was it November we were going to begin to let contracts to finish the Dalbar retrofit and diamond grinding on the HE Bailey. I, I think we were going to do one in November and maybe one in March. Uh, but we've determined that we probably can't do that on the entire uh, section between Lawton and the state line. Have we determined uh, how much of that we're going to be able to do and how much is bad enough that we can't do the Dalbar retrofit? Still looking at it today. The pavement that you're referencing there from the state line going back north is definitely more deteriorated than what you had from Lawton going back north to Oklahoma City. So a DBR might have a small fix and might improve the ride, but some of that pavement is in pretty bad shape. And so we are looking at more of a robust um, full replacement in that section, but we haven't gotten a full report yet, but we are still discussing that with you. So what time frame are we looking at to determine how much of that we can do and how much we can't? I would say, Darren, currently we have the end of that in our capital plan, maybe in year four. Does that sound about right? Yeah. I have to double check on that. But I would say within this year, we should have a plan of action about where that's going to fall into the capital plan. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Love, I think that's going to fall after the Turner. Yeah. yeah. Down with the Turner. <laughs> <laughs> Both are very important to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's nice that they're representing their constituency. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item is our trustee report, Rachel Singleton. Good morning, Chairman, members of the authority. As bond trustee to the authority, all monthly debt service transfers were made for the semi-annual payments due to the bondholders as required by the trust agreement. The semi-annual interest payments due to the bondholders totaling $46,022,115.23 were paid on 7-1 of 24 and also a requirement of the trust agreement. To our knowledge, all other requirements set forth in the trust agreement have been satisfied. Questions of my report? Any questions? Thank you, Rachel. Thank That's you. always good news. Our next report is operating results and financial condition, Wendy Smith. Chairman Jones, members of the authority, Director E. Kelly. You've all received your operations report for May prepared by the Comptroller Division. And as Rachel just stated, OTA continues to be in strong financial position and in compliance with its trust indenture. Net toll revenues for May of 2024 on the Turnpike system reported 34 million, an increase of 10.5% as compared to May of 2023. Total transactions grew by 1.4%. I think that reflects the fact that trucks are up more so than passenger vehicles. So that's why the revenues are up much higher. Um, and heavy truck traffic, I think, is up about 5%. Additionally, year-to-date toll revenues continue to outpace budgeted projections by 7.6%. The OTA continues to maintain a conservative approach to spending. Collectively, for the years, the division managers held revenue fund operating expenses to 22.8% under the 2024 operating and maintenance budget, and, they, and that continues to allow us to achieve and exceed our trust-required senior and total debt service coverage ratios. The Gilcrease transactions continue to climb. The Gilcrease Turnpike has now been open long enough so we can compare month to month, so from May to May, year over year. So as you know, new turnpikes continue, they have a ramp up period that can take up to five years to level out. The Gilcrease Turnpike is no exception. Daily trans transactions for the Gilcrease Turnpike have increased 45% as compared to last May, going from 19,140 per day in May of 2023 to 27,660 per day in May of 2024. It is a computer, a commuter <laughs> turnpike with weekday average daily traffic just under 30,000 per day as compared to weekday average daily traffic uh, being under by j about just barely under 23,000 per day. That's a significant increase because, I mean, a few months ago, I was seeing it at 15,000 on the weekend. So it really has um, been driven up. And the public continues to discover this route as an alternative to the construction along I-244 in Tulsa where traffic is down to one lane. So. With the popularity of this corridor continuing to increase, I am happy to report that the Gilcrease Expressway recently received a ratings upgrade from BAA3 to BAA2 from Moody's Investors Services. As you know, they're an independent company that provides financial research and credit ratings on bonds, loans issued by government entities. The Gilcrease Expressway is a standalone facility um, without the support of OTA revenues and receive, so therefore it receives a separate rating from, from the OTA system. A portion of that project was financed with a loan from TIFIA from the USDOT at a rate of 1.35%. One of the terms of that loan agreement is that the project requires a ratings review annually prior to June 30th. And so what precipitated this increase in rating? So Moody's analysts reviewed the performance of the facility, projected operating results, and management practices of the OTA to make its determination. The higher than expected performance, higher future projected traffic and revenue during the ramp up period of a startup facility, annual assistance payments, and conservative management were key factors to their review. And although OTA is the owner and operator of this project, there were multiple partners for this project, including ODOT. OTA provides additional support for the Gilcrease, with ODOT serving as a pass-through of the payments to the trustee from the OTA general fund as a source of the payments pursuant to the assistance agreement. I'll take any questions. We're pretty excited about the upgrade. We did not. Um, I also wanted to mention that this is Jordan's project, and Jordan, I know he's going to hate it that I say this, but Jordan has done a phenomenal job communicating with Moody's and also with our TNR um, because we have to provide so much information. Jonna provides a lot of information 
um, from my staff as well. And um, there's just a lot that goes into this because there's so much information that goes back and forth between the entity and the ratings. So it's, it's definitely a commuter uh, turnpike, but I see more and more trucks as time goes by too. Yes. And I think particularly if we get the north route on this, um, that'll really, I think we're going to see that continue to increase because it really is a great alternative to Highway 75, particularly during heavy traffic times. Absolutely. And the USDOT has dibs on financing that north route too. So they understand that that is going to make a big difference uh, if it's built uh, onto this original facility. So any other questions or comments? Thank you. I could. My comment would be one that's just, you know, that's a feather in the cap to OTA. Hats off to everybody involved. Um, that's a big thing. It's a really important project for the city of Tulsa. So Absolutely. something that they wanted for a long time, and we worked really hard with all of the partners to make sure that we could be a conduit for that. So only we're really proud on, of that. We've been working on it for 60 years. <laughs> yeah. Before. I think it's as old as me. So I think it was since 1961. I always say that. Wow, it was born when I was. So. <laughs> Well, it just, again, proves the merit of the project. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Now our director report, Joey Kelly. Thank you, thank Amanda. Uh, I was going to ask Amanda, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I was going to ask Amanda to talk just a little bit about some of the IT initiatives uh, before I take Absolutely. the stand. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Amanda. I thought it looked a little strange with me coming up here first, huh? <laughs> Um, thank you, Director e. Kelly, for allowing me to still start part of your time to talk about our team. So I'm uh, very excited to talk to you about our amazing IT team. All right. IT is broken into two groups. Enterprise Services is responsible for all in-house development supporting Pike Pass and Plate Pay customers, including coordination, development, and testing of all applications, jobs and processes, and reporting. This team is also responsible for all data from the lanes, which includes coordination with our IOP partners and other third-party vendors. Enterprise Services also maintains our online presence with the traveling public, Pike Pass, and Plate Pay customers. The network and system operations team is responsible for supporting fiber connectivity across the Turnpike network, including our Pike Pass store locations. They also provide desktop to support for all OTA members, including maintaining our internal network infrastructure. Our content management team provides digital imaging as well as process automation to reduce and eliminate manual processes. Working with our partners, we ensure all Turnpike Lane equipment is functioning at optimum levels and maintained accordingly. This team functions like our maintenance group, so they are on the Turnpike when they need to when we have fiber cuts and things that relate to the maintaining the consistency on our Turnpike network. They work all hours providing redundancy to recover as quickly as possible and avoid outages. Summertime travel is a perfect lead-in to talk about interoperability. In May, OTA hosted the Central U.S. Interoperability Annual Meeting. During this meeting, we discussed upcoming work within the Central Region, future planning for national interoperability, and updates from agencies. This year, we added a service project to our annual meeting. We follow, we're following the lead set by IBTTA when visiting a city to give back to the community. We volunteered our time at Citizens Caring for Children. Citizens Caring for Children serves the needs of Oklahoma children living in foster care, the most vulnerable in the state, by providing clothing, personal hygiene items, resources, and continued support focused on education and build a brighter tomorrow. Part of our work included taking inventory and restocking of the store area and inventory in their warehouse. It was a great experience for all of us, and a special thank you to Rhonda Powell for helping to set up that project. Since we were in person, we had an early celebration welcoming E-470 to the Central Region. E-470's Go Live was on Sunday, June 2nd. We are excited to expand the availability of seamless travel in Colorado to our Pike Pass customers. The numbers that we are shown are for June. They're pretty good for a few days short of a full month. Wrapping up our annual meeting, we discussed technology updates within the Central Region, expanding the features of our hub software additional members joining the Central Region, and focused on the future of, future of national interoperability. We are excited for the future as we continue to expand into other parts of the nation to provide seamless travel to our Pike Pass customers. Switching gears slightly to provide a couple other updates. On our Plate Pay website, we made a slight update changing the wording for the ability to search by, by license plate, previously known as guest payment. This update provides clarity for our Plate Pay customers. And then about our cashless conversion, because we've talked about that quite a bit. Cashless conversion is still progressing forward. State Highway 375 Indian Nation will be converted in phases. Motors, motorists 
can expect the first segment to be converted by the end of August, with the remainder of the southeastern turnpike converting in the fall. The final turnpike on OTA system to convert to cashless tolling will be I-44 Will Rogers and is on target to be converted before the end of the year. Now, a little shameless plug for me. You're only as good as the people you have around you. I am a blessed to lead a group of exceptionally talented and hardworking people. It would not be possible without the support from you, the board, Director E. Kelly, and our executive leadership. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Where are we on the, uh, uh, on our, on the Sun Pass as part of our interoperability initiative? Part of the Southeast integration that we have is the, the groups that we already have, four to Turnpike Enterprise, Sun Pass is a group that we're hoping that we can get with the expansion into the Northeast contingent because they are part of that group. So we're hoping that we're going to, we're going to pick them up there. And we're hoping that that's very, very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Director E. Kelly. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for entertaining uh, letting Amanda get up and give an IT update. If I had tried to do that, I would have stumbled around worse than I normally do, and uh, and I sure couldn't have given as uh, as in depth of an update on some of the IT and uh, interoperability uh, initiatives that we have going. Um, Mr. Barry asked a question earlier about incentive, and I thought uh, Ladan gave a great answer. We uh, just to, there's a lot of different factors that go into whether we do incentives on contracts and we don't do incentives on all contracts. But one of the big factors is, do, does the project affect traffic? Does it have the potential to drag cones out into, into the highway and then leave them there for what could be potentially a really long time? And so most of our projects have, have some, uh, some piece of the project that involves traffic control. And so we especially incentivize that part of the work and then in general, we'll incentivize an entire, an overall contract just to get it off the road and finished. Our, what we have found through years of doing this and both my time at ODOT and since I've been here at OTA is that incentives don't cost us much. Uh, the contractors are able to factor that incentive into their, uh, into their pay items. So they're able to do the project a little cheaper if they're able to do the project quickly. And so uh, we don't think we pay a whole lot for incentives. We think it gets the contractor off the, uh, out of traffic. We think that's a big safety improvement. So that's why uh, a lot of the contracts you see have incentives. We don't always bring incentive uh, agenda items to you because not every contract earns, uh, contractor earns that incentive, uh, even though they may have bid it uh, to, to receive it. This last one that we did was 50 days. That's a little longer than normal. That's probably because of the size of the project, right? So, I mean, because, uh, right. you know, most of the largest ones I see are 30 days. Lots and lots of factors to, uh, to, to consider in, in the length of time, the maximum length of time we consider for an incentive, uh, including how long is the total contract, uh, how innovative do we think the contractor can be you know, after they've bid a project, some of our more straightforward work like cable barrier projects. I mean, those are pretty straightforward projects. Uh, mill, and, mill and fill, mill and inlay projects, those are pretty straightforward. The ones that are a little bit more difficult to put a, uh, put a number to include the bridge rehabs that we talked about earlier. Uh, a lot of those bridges, and you'll see some change orders that come across, uh, usually pretty significant for bridge rehab projects. That's because without going up there and really hammering on the bridge, you don't know what repairs you're going to do until you uh, really get started. Sometimes those projects are scoped a couple years before we build them. The old bridges that we have, and Darren really should be the one answering to the, answering some of these, but the, uh, the old gray steel that we use, in, that was used in years past, rusts and caused some of the concrete to pop off. Uh, that's due to the salt we put on the road. I mean, we partly caused that problem with the salt that we use for the safety uh, during a snow and ice event. Uh, so it's a cost uh, that gets passed into future maintenance. So we do change orders based on, you know, uh, uh, bridge rehabs that, and sometimes those are significant just because we can't anticipate all the repairs that we're going to do. Sometimes it's a little bit of a, an educated guess on that. Uh, we do a pretty good job, but th there's usually just a little bit of extra. So I just wanted to answer that question 
uh, Mr. Barry, about an incentive. Just talk about how most of our work does affect traffic, and we, we want to get contractors off the road for their safety and for the traveling public safety. Uh, Wendy did a great job talking about the uh, Gilcrease ratings upgrade. That is a tremendous thing. Um, when uh, the Gilcrease had five partners to build, a major project took 60 years to, uh, to complete, um, carrying a lot of traffic. Uh, uh, Ms. Weber, I know you drive it just about daily or, or maybe multiple times a day, depending on where you go. And uh, I, the times that I'm in Tulsa, I'll usually swing by just to see how things are going. And it's, it has more traffic every time I'm up there. It's very significant. The uh, ratings increase um, you know, is based on a lot of different things that Wendy talked about. And, and one thing that we haven't really updated or talked to the board about is that as part of receiving the TIFIA loan, the, we had to agree to toll increases. The first toll increase was projected to happen on January 1st, 2024, this year. And it was 5%? No, it, was when it, well, it would have been 3%. It would have been 3%. Okay, thank you, Wendy. It, would, it was 3% and it would have been 3% every other year. And those were uh, anticipated toll increases to meet projected ratios. What we're happy to report is that by the middle of last year, the middle of 2023, the traffic was up, which meant the revenue was up. So immediately, uh, Wendy and I got with uh, then Director Gatz and talked about, do we really need to do a toll increase to meet these ratios? And what if we went and talked to the bondholder, which is the federal government, and asked, what if we didn't do this toll increase? Is there a way for us to maintain the toll that we have now, keep the tolls low? That's always a goal of ours. I think that's a goal of everybody that's on the board. It should be a goal of all of our uh, OTA members, all of our, all of our employees. And so we were able to negotiate that uh, to delay that toll increase. Now, currently we anticipate that that has been pushed off and, and delayed to be now January 1st, 2027, six, 26, yeah, sorry. So that's anticipated to be January 1st, 2026 now. And, um, uh, but the, the main thing to, to, that I'm trying to highlight is that it's carrying a lot of traffic. It's receiving a lot more revenue than we projected. It's getting, uh, so, by that, we're able to uh, try to uh, get a better bond rating, which we've achieved, and by that, we're able to maintain a lower toll rate, which we're also working towards. So trying to get it more in line with the rest of our network, uh, understanding that the Gilcrease is more expensive per mile than the rest of our network, and we're just trying to get that a little bit better in line. So big time kudos to Wendy, Julie, her team, Jordan, especially in the back. We'll recognize him again, even though he hates it. Uh, but that's a big deal. Um, uh, to receive that ratings upgrade. Um, I want to talk just briefly about the cable barrier project uh, that was that you graciously awarded a few minutes ago. The Turnpike Authority began doing cable barrier in 2012, talking about it, awarded the first project 2013, really started uh, going to work on that. Uh, prior to that, we'd installed the concrete barriers in the medians of the interstate. Uh, portions on the Will Rogers, uh, Turner, and H.E. Bailey. But we hadn't installed median cable barrier on our, uh, on our rural turnpikes. And so what I want to talk about just for a second is that you know, we, we had a gap there of a couple years where we weren't doing a lot of cable barrier projects. Mr. Love, you were chairman at the time, and I remember having a conversation with you about a crossover accident that had occurred. And uh, your question was, where are we with doing the rest of the cable barrier? And my answer at the time wasn't a, wasn't a great one, that we were getting started back into it. We knew there was a need, and we were uh, going to work uh, at installing cable uh, on our entire network. I am thankful that you're here today and that I'm here today to, to look at you and tell you we're about to be done. Uh, it is a I'm huge deal. I'm thankful, too. So. I am <laughs> You know, the, the numbers that Darren had, the more than 2,000 accidents uh, or 2,000 cable barrier strikes, I mean, that's just tremendous. Uh, our maintenance guys, when, uh, when there's a, a rain event or a snow event, they know that they're going to, as a, as a follow-up to those events that, that happen every year, there's going to be cable strikes and we're going to have to repair cable barrier. And uh, as tough and as dangerous as that part of the work is, it has saved numerous lives. 
and been a tremendous asset for us and that uh, uh, and that those the accidents that do occur are, are usually minor most of the time somebody gets into the cable they're able to keep driving and uh, uh, the ones where it is a major accident and, and they're stuck there, we're able to collect on insurance. I know that might be a question uh, from some of you. So we, uh, all of those expenses to uh, repair cable barrier or replace posts, those on, aren't always on us. Sometimes uh, we are able to collect those from insurance, but uh, really thank the board for the support and cable barrier. I would say just in, uh, there, there has never been a, a bigger safety improvement to our system, to the turnpike system, than positive barrier in the in the in the median. Maintenance does a great job during snow and ice events of keeping the road dry and and melted, and uh, that's a huge safety improvement. But cable barrier, I think, has saved a lot of lives on our uh, here in here in our state. So really, really proud of that, and really thank the entire team for uh, making that deal come true because it's been a lot of work on Darren to uh, get those projects designed and and on Jeff and Ladan, TJ on getting them constructed. So super excited about that. Uh, the last, uh, the only current project that's, that's ongoing, I think is on the uh, Indian Nation. That's a long uh, project and it's down, down on the south end and this'll, this last project awarded today is the last 10 miles. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, having that complete. We'll, we'll finish with some Dalbar retrofits and diamond grinds on those old concrete pavements. And then the next thing that's that's coming around, I mean, our network is old and it's getting older all the time. And uh, when when somebody asks about uh, what our initiatives are in, in the, our capital plan, I always talk about <coughs> that it's those old pavements, getting them up to a, a drivable standard and really getting those old bridges that are, some of them coming on set over 70 years old either getting them replaced or getting them rehabbed in a condition that they can carry traffic moving forward. Uh, and we're going to get back to that business because we won't be in, installing the cable barrier anymore. Uh, we'll be back in the pavements and the, the bridge projects. So those will be what, you're, what you'll be seeing in the coming months and years as we add projects to the capital plan. Um, a few uh, safety reminders uh, to help people avoid contact with the cable barrier. Our center median is in, on those rural turnpikes is 15 feet, I think, uh, line, yellow line to yellow line, right, Darren? And so uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of distraction, of, uh, of error on the driver's part to get off the road on those old grass medians. And it definitely doesn't take much distraction to get into the cable barrier. Uh, so we tell everybody that the posted speed limit that we have on our network is for sunny, dry condition, uh, the, the most favorable condition. If it's uh, windy or uh, night or wet or, or snow or any other factor, any other weather factors or congested, we suggest that everybody slow down. Obviously, we want everybody to wear a seatbelt. Uh, tremendous uh, life-saving device right there available in all modern vehicles is that seat belt and, and again in Oklahoma uh, we rank closer to the bottom on seat belt usage and we want to we really want to get that up and uh, and be a top 10 state or actually I'd like to be number one state on seat belt usage we got a long ways to go and so I uh, invite the board uh, the folks that are here with us today and anybody listening online to please when you get in a vehicle, make sure everybody's got that seat belt on. And if you get an opportunity, tell your family, tell your friends, tell your loved ones that uh, they need to wear their seat belt every time they get in the vehicle. So with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, would stand for any questions that the board might have. Any questions? Thank you, Joe. Just, just one comment. I might have looked at those cable barriers and wondered how they could ever stop a semi until I saw a video of one doing exactly that. It is pretty impressive. Yes, the, the cable uh, barrier system first used in Oklahoma was on the Hefner Parkway uh, back over 20 years ago uh, now. And uh, that system, the, the initial uh, system has been upgraded to, to add additional wires. It's taller and routinely, unfortunately, uh, and fortunately, but routinely it stops on our network, semi-trucks and, and large commercial vehicles and keeps them out of oncoming traffic on the other side, so. Thank you. 
<clears throat> I believe that concludes uh, the items on our agenda this morning. Uh, I would ask for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Motion for adjournment. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Please vote appropriately on the motion to adjourn. Voting is ended, and we are adjourned to our next meeting scheduled for Tuesday, August 6th, 2024, at 10 a.m.